Okay, so how about chemical reaction of alkenes? Alkenes ni adalah non-reactive uh, organic compound. Okay, dia generally in not towards many chemical reagents such as base, acid, dehydrating agents and aqueous oxidizing agents. Tapi, um, dia non-reactive juga sebabnya kita tahu alkenes ni adalah hydrocarbon yang ada carbon dengan hydrogen, right? And then, we know alkenes ni dia adalah carbon hydrogen single bond. And carbon dengan hydrogen ni, they have nearly the same electronegativity. So, dia non-reactive just because of dia non-polar. Okay? Tapi, chemical properties of alkene ada dua, such as combustion dan juga halogenation. Okay, so the first chemical properties of alkene ialah combustion. Okay, kita tahu bila kita nak buat combustion, we need fuel, we need oxygen. Okay, nanti uh, the product of combustion, kalau let's say dia ada enough oxygen ataupun excess oxygen, you will get carbon dioxide, water and heat, heat release. Okay, uh, tapi kalau let's say tak cukup oxygen, you will get carbon monoxide. Uh, and still you will produce H2O and heat lah. Okay, so basically, bila you nak build the equation untuk combustion of alkenes, alkenes ni dia akan jadi fuel kat depan ni. Okay, lepas tu, um, you need to remember anytime kalau you nak buat combustion, okay, secara utama dia yang kena ada selain daripada fuel bahan api adalah Oksigen, okay, kehadiran oksigen ni. Uh, lepas tu, lepas dapat combustion, kenalah dapat produk carbon dioxide uh, dan juga H2O. Okay, uh, previously I told you guys why do you need to learn about the physical state of your unbranched alkene is because Nanti, bila you build the chemical equation, you boleh letak terus fasa-fasa dia apa. For example, kat sini, methane. This is unbranched alkene yang ada carbon satu sahaja. If you recall, uh, physical state of unbranched alkene yang ada satu sahaja carbon, dia punya physical state dia apa? Gas. Uh, dia kalau let's say carbon tu ada satu sampai empat and then dia unbranched dia punya physical state dia adalah gas. So, you boleh dah letak fasa dia kat sini. Gas phase. Okay. Oxygen as usual we know that is a gas phase. Carbon dioxide gas phase. Okay. H2O is a liquid phase. Alright. Uh, lepas tu um, kalau let's say you tak tahu nak balance kan macam mana okay. You balance kan carbon dulu Lepas tu, hydrogen. Lastly, baru oksigen. Okay. Uh, so, you kena tahulah cara-cara dan tips untuk buat chemical equation combustion of alkene. Sebab sometimes dalam exam, dia tak bagi, dia suruh kamu buat. Macam tu. Uh, macam ni, this is a branch alkenes. Obviously, because ada banyak kurungan kat sini. So, kita tak tahulah fasa dia apa. Uh, Biasanya kalau dalam soalan dia minta fasa-fasa apa tu, alkin tersebut, dia punya uh, physical state tu, uh, dia mesti bagi yang easy-peasy punya lah. Tak adalah bagi yang macam complicated like this. Okay, uh, tapi as usual we know that uh, oxygen is in gas phase, carbon dioxide in gas phase, H2 is in liquid phase. Alright. Uh, tapi yang pastinya, you just need to know reactant, kalau let's say in combustion of alkin, mesti ada Uh, bahan bakar alkin dan juga oksigen. Uh, kalau let's say if it is in the excess oxygen, the product that you will get is always carbon dioxide and H2O. Okay, tapi kalau let's say if it is in limited oxygen, okay, for example, kalau you ada butane, this is butane because ada empat carbon kan. Uh, if let's say if it is in limited oxygen, you will produce carbon monoxide and H2O. Tapi sama je bila you nak balance kan the chemical equation is always you have to balance the carbon first baru hydrogen and last sekali oxygen. Okay? Okay, the next chemical properties of alkene that you need to know of is about halogenation of alkene. Okay, um, 
Di mana reactant adalah alkin, campurkan dengan halogen. In the presence of UV light and you will get a halo alkin. Uh, pluskan dengan set product adalah hydrogen dengan uh, halogen. Okay. So basically, halogenation of alkin ni, uh, kalau kita recall 4.1, the type of chemical reaction uh, yang melibatkan halogenation of alkin ni, the type of chemical reaction dia ialah substitution reaction. Tapi substitution kan ada tiga jenis. But since at the presence of UV light, halogen, alkene, so we call this as UV free radical substitution reaction. Di mana kita akan substitute atau kita akan swap satu benda. Okay. So apa benda yang kita swap kat sini, satu benda tersebut, hydrogen dengan satu sahaja halogen di sini. Okay. So that's why kita dapat halo halo Halo-alkin ialah alkin yang di mana kita dah swap one of the hydrogen in alkene dengan halogen. Okay. Uh, side product dia ni lah. One of the hydrogen dengan hydrogen. Okay. Uh. Okay. So let's look at some of the examples here. Um, as you can see, these are all the examples for the halogenation of alkene yang akan menghasilkan Halo alkin and also side product hydrogen dengan halogen one of the halogen yang digunakan lah. Okay, so we can see here uh, the first example here you contohnya you ada uh, CH4. Okay, kita ada alkin CH4 campurkan dengan halogen Cl2 under UV light. Okay, dia akan undergo the type of chemical reaction yang dia akan undergo is UV free radical substitution. Okay. Okay, bila kita bercakap pasal substitution, we know that dia akan substitute satu sahaja benda. Apa satu yang dia substitute tu? Dia akan substitute satu hydrogen dekat alkene with uh, satu sahaja halogen. Okay. So, kita boleh tengok kat sini. Daripada CH4, uh, dia punya product dia that you will get ialah CH3Cl. Okay, you can see number of Hydrogen atom saya berkurang daripada 4 jadi 3 because one of the hydrogen atom dekat CH4 ni kita dah substitute dengan one of the Cl atom dekat halogen Cl2. Faham tak? So that's why dia jadi CH3 Cl. Okay, this whole thing we call it as halo alkene and the side product here ialah HCl. Okay, so the next example sama saja. CH3, CH3 plus Cl2 under UV light and kita hanya akan replace one of the um, hydrogen atom here with one of the Cl atom here. So you will get a cycloalkene, uh, cyclo you will get a haloalkene CH3, CH2, Cl. Okay. Uh, and then set product dia adalah HCl. And lastly, uh, for this kind of uh, alkene pun sama je. Daripada tiga, jadi dua. Uh, because one of the hydrogen is already uh, been substituted dengan Cl atom. Okay. Uh, okay. Untuk um, nombor dua dengan tiga ni, contoh alkene ni, you hanya akan dapat satu saja produk. Because all of the hydrogen atoms are identical. Okay. Macam mana nak tahu hydrogen atoms are identical ni? Ha, Kat sini lah you kena rujuk 4.1. 4.1 about. Nak tahu dia identical ke tidak? You kena tengok the class of the hydrogen atom. Okay. So kalau the class dia, all of the class of the hydrogen atoms are all the same. That's why you will only get one product. Okay, nanti kita akan learn more about this later. Tapi you just need to bear in mind, uh, you dapat satu saja product major macam ni because uh, the class of hydrogen atoms dekat 1, 2 dan 3 ni semua class of hydrogen atoms dia sama. Okay, tapi untuk number 4, contoh number 4 ni, dia dapat dua product because uh, the hydrogen atoms so ada yang non-identical. For example, this one is secondary. Uh, secondary carbon. So, bila dia secondary carbon, dia akan menjadikan hydrogen ni sebagai uh, secondary hydrogen jugalah. Yang ni pula adalah primary ni pun primary uh, hydro, uh, primary carbon. So, dia akan menjadikan hydrogen ni primary hydrogen as well. 
so bila ada this kind of competition kita tahu pun UV free radical substitution ni free radical ni terhasil daripada homolytic cleavage betul tak Okay, so kita tahu uh, class of free radical secondary free radical dia lagi stable daripada primary free radical so that's why kalau major product kita akan ambil hydrogen yang dekat secondary secondary carbon ataupun secondary hydrogen atoms just because of bila kita ambil daripada secondary hydrogen ni dia akan nantilah bila kita belajar pasal mekanism dia you can see that uh, dia akan menghasilkan secondary free radical so we know that secondary carbon free radical ni dia lagi stable compared to primary so that's why major product ni okay major ni terhasil just because of daripada secondary uh, secondary carbon secondary free radical how do you know that this is a secondary free radical carbon because uh, the, this carbon itself is a secondary carbon so that's why you kena kena tahulah the class of hydrogen atom the uh, and the class of hydrogen atoms ni the depends on the class of the carbon atom okay so kat sini kita akan bila bila let's say uh, you substitute satu hydrogen dekat secondary hydrogen atom punya class uh, dengan Cl kita akan form a major product Minor product ni pula is when uh, dia terhasil bila uh, you ambil hydrogen uh, apa tu ataupun you substitute uh, Cl ni dekat hydrogen yang primary. Okay so that's why uh, you dapat uh, CH3, CH2, CH2, Cl. This hydrogen is it comes from the primary hydrogen. So that's why lah you dapat major dengan minor. Okay, selain daripada the class of hydrogen atoms ataupun class of free radical yang mempengaruhi uh, penghasilan produk uh, adalah penggunaan reagent. Okay, kalau let's say you guna Cl2 reagent, uh, you akan dapat major and minor product according to the according to the class of uh, hydrogen atoms and also the class of the carbon free radical ok uh, sebab tu dapat dua tapi kalau let's say you gunakan reagent BR2 uh, dia akan terus pergi, dia akan terus hasilkan major product sahaja ok uh, sebab uh, BR2 ni dia very slow and selective kind of reagents ok so let's look at this example dia bagi tahu kat sini the bromination of 2 methyl butane ok macam mana 2 methyl butane tu ok kalau tak tahu lukis lah butane 1, 2, 3, 4 dekat carbon number 2 mesti ada uh, substituent CH3 and the rest you just lengkapkan saja dia punya uh, the number of hydrogen atom ok 1, 2, 3 2, 2, 3, 4 ok uh, so this is how your 2 methyl butane looks like. Tapi bila dia kata bromination of 2 methyl butane bermaksud dia tengah buat hydrogenation of 2 methyl butane. Bermaksud uh, 2 methyl butane ni dia campurkan dengan reagent BR2 under UV light. Uh, kena wajib letak UV because ni adalah uh, UV free radical substitution of alkene. Alright. So sekarang ni dia akan menghasilkan produk lah. Uh, tapi as you can see here, dia dapat beberapa isomers kat sini. Okay. Uh, this is the first one is when uh, kita substitute one of the hydrogen dekat CH3 ni dengan BR. Uh, okay. So, this will be the primary free radical. Uh, kalau let's say you buat mechanism lah. Hmm. Kiranya kita substitute hydrogen yang primary class okay, dengan BR. Uh, so that's why this is the primary, this is the secondary, okay, just because of kita ambil hydrogen yang dekat secondary carbon atom ni. So this comes from the secondary free carbon free radical um, and also kita, kita substitute one of the secondary punya hydrogen with bromine. And lastly, um, this is the uh, hydrogen yang dekat tertiary carbon kita substitute dia dengan BR ok, so we can see here uh, actually this will be the major product 
why why this is the major product because kita tahu uh, tertiary carbon free radical is more stable compared to secondary dengan primary free radical okay you might not see this carbon degree free radical yet just because kita tak learn about the mechanism tapi once you have learned about the mechanism nanti you tahu lah okay kalau dia say hydrogen yang comes from the tertiary carbon uh, it will gonna produce Uh, tertiary carbon free radical which dia akan buat uh, apa tu, lagi stable lah tertiary free radical kan dia lagi stable lah. so dia akan kalau let's say uh, ni akan jadi major product lah faham tak 